Hi, I'm Paul Beckwith with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology, also with Carleton University Department of Geography and Environmental Studies. I'm going to talk about spinners in this video, okay? Not this type of spinner. Actually, one spinner, Hurricane Harvey. Okay, so I'm going to give a tutorial here on how to track it, how to see what's going on, how to follow it with a lot of different websites and stuff. So I'm, if I go too fast for you to keep up, you know, I really recommend that people try to follow along and go to these websites and look at the latest um, as to what is happening. Because there's going to be a lot of stuff going on over the next three or four days. Um, and then people will have the skills to assess any particular hurricane. So let's get started here. Okay, this is uh, the fourth attempt to get a computer going for me. First one just uh, was too slow. Second one, a fan started above and wouldn't stop. Messed me up. Third one, blue screen, and this one. Okay, so first site I really like is Wonder, Wonderground. So Google Wonderground. Okay, do a search. And wherever you live, you can enter the city and get all the weather information on that city. So this is what the uh, menus look like. Okay, so it's all about, all about uh, Harvey, no surprise. Okay, if you go to Maps and Radar, and you go to uh, the Wonder Map here. Okay, this is a really interesting tool. Okay, so what it brings up here is the default is it's got all these weather stations. All these people have personal weather stations across the country. So you can kind of see uh, what's going on with them. But what we want to look at is uh, we want to get rid of the weather stations. And we want to look at the radar. Okay, get rid of the weather station. So let's go down here, use the toggle. Now, this is... Uh, Here's what's going on here. Now, this is really interesting here because look at the grand scheme of things. So here's Harvey there. It went ashore um, with 130 mile per hour winds as a category four on Friday, August 25th at 10 p.m. or so. The, uh, the storm didn't exist 72 hours previously. Okay, tropical disturbance down here and it formed and uh, organized and in three days it went from tropical storm down here to category four up here the water here as i'll show you is very warm it's well above 80 degrees fahrenheit 26.5 celsius or 80 fahrenheit is the temp minimum temperature required to uh, get enough evaporation for these uh, th these storms to to form so What's happening is the rotation is this way. It's always counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere because it's a low pressure in the center. Air goes in, rotates to the right because of the Coriolis force. So it's always running this way, counterclockwise. So what's happening is these bands here are spinning up here and they're joining with this storm up here. And also the bands that are spinning off this way are, are giving all this mess over here in Florida. So these things that you see here are related to this storm and this is pretty phenomenal because we've got one you know it's like one massive system that's all joined you know everybody's focusing on Harvey but there's these guys here so you can just zoom in here on on uh, Harvey and I'll show you a couple things here you can get a rudimentary sea surface temperature here um, but there's some better sites to show that sea temperature sea surface temperature anomaly. So let's play a little movie here and see the progression. Okay, so take a minute to load up. Close this ad. Okay, so what you can see here is you can play a progression over time. It gives a time here and you can see how things are changing. Right now, Houston is being nailed by this outer band here. Uh, the problem is, is the eye is hardly moving at all. It's stalled out. It hasn't really moved. Okay, so let's zoom in a bit here. Okay, so you can see Houston here, and Houston is being nailed right now. Now, this storm is going to last a long time. Because it's stalled out, I'll show you what the projection is on the path, etc. 
how you can find that. But this storm is going to be around. Um, the eye is moving so slowly. The eye is going to, so it came across, it came across here on Friday night at 10 o'clock. Here it is on, on uh, late Saturday night, early Sunday morning. It's going to loop back here and probably come up here or who knows what it's going to do, but it's, uh, you know, it's sticking around. We're talking about 40 to 60 inches of rainfall in a lot of these regions. So we'll have a look at all of this fun stuff. So, okay, so that's the first site. Now let's go back to Google here. Okay, um, so... Wonderground, Wonder Map, great site. So let's have a look at Climate Reanalyzer. Okay, Google Climate Reanalyzer, click on it. And we go to, there's all these different menus here. Let's look at today's weather maps here. Okay, and uh, so you can look at things like sea surface temperature anomaly, you know, all these different things. Um, so what we're going to do is sea surface temperature anomaly. So here we are down in the Gulf here. You can expand it just with the, uh, just with the uh, control plus. Expand it. So here we are down in the Gulf. The water's warmer than normal. Um, you can look at this image here and, and see, you know, these are the hot spots of water around the planet. A lot of structure, very warm water here, for, storm formed here, came across here in 72 hours, like I said. Okay, um, if you click on here, you get different parts of the world. Okay, but we'll go back and focus on, on uh, North America here. Okay, so this is not the best site to get this. The Gulf of Mexico is very warm. So let's go back. Uh, let's, let's go and uh, go to, back to Google. Okay, and a much better site is Earth uh, Null School for looking at all kinds of stuff. So Google Earth Null School. Okay, you click on this. No thanks to my thing there. Okay, this is an excellent site. Highly recommended. This computer is not enough, fast enough for my liking, and I'm not sure why it's messing up. Oh, come on, please. There we go. Okay, so you get, um, you get the earth here. Okay, so let's focus here, over here. So just turn it around. You can see this green here. You can expand it. Okay, so what we're looking at is we're looking at surface winds. If all the menus are here on Earth. So click on Earth. We're looking at air, surface, winds. Okay, a lot of other parameters, but that's what we're looking at here. And you can focus right in here and see where we're at. Okay, now a very good feature here is if we want to go back in time, we can just click. This takes you back a whole day. This takes you back three hours. Okay, or you can go to forecasts, going the other way into the future. Okay, so you can just cycle back, uh, click it eight times. You go back, uh, you know, eight days or whatever. So try to see the formation of it. Click this, right? There's fine scale. Uh, so let's go back uh, a day here, for example. And we go back another day here and another day here. Okay, so there you can see where it is. And we can go back another day. So you can see this disturbance forming down here. Okay, I'll move this over a bit. Okay, so this is on, on August 21st, 22nd, 23rd, 24th, you know, 25th, where it came ashore. Okay, and then 26 where it is now, stalled out. Okay, so that's very useful to see. Another thing here is um, mean sea level pressure. Okay, so this is the sea level pressure. 
So what you'll have is this is about 1015 here and in the in the uh, hurricanes just a, about a thousand or so I can zoom in and try to find a lower the lowest pressure area moving this around it's about a thousand hexapascals is low pressure so high pressure air moves in everything deflects to the right in the northern hemisphere that from the Coriolis force so we get our storm there okay um, you can look at things like um, the uh, let's go to the ocean now so okay so we're going to look at a couple things here okay um, you can look at ocean waves and look at the wave height and see uh, you know how uh, you know 1.72 meter waves 2.03 meter waves okay you can see the wave heights in the various regions I want to look at the sea surface temperature Okay, it's just uh, uploading and refreshing. Server down. Why is it saying server down? Server down. Huh. There we go. Okay. Okay, so here we go. Sea surface temperature. Let's do sea surface temperature. Okay, so 30.8, 30.5. You know, it's this whole Gulf region is well over the 26.5 that's required for um, hurricane formation. In fact, all of this ocean is, you know, the, the, the vast part of the ocean is. You can look at the sea surface temperature anomaly, which is, so you can see these red areas, 1.1. So, you know, the, the water is warm, but it's not like super, you know, exceptionally warm compared to like the anomaly is a difference to the average. You know, it's about a degree to two degrees or so. What's interesting is the storm came ashore here and um, the temperatures uh, are, are still pretty warm here off the coast. You'd expect, what happens when a hurricane goes through is it mixes all the water and you tend to get colder. You know, the surface water is heated by the sun. It's the hottest. Um, as the water is mixed up by the storm, the hurricane moving along, then it mixes up the water and it brings up colder water from below and that usually means another hurricane wouldn't follow right along in the path but this water is still warm keep that in mind so if, if Har Harvey when Harvey turns it's supposed to go this way if it continues to go out into the ocean again it will turn it will then turn and hit another part of the shore so that, I guess that would be the worst case this thing spins around comes out here and then moves along and nails other areas you know we got New Orleans which is a problem so we have to really hope that that doesn't happen Okay, what else do we have with, uh, with, so you can play movies on any of these things, right, to see how the parameters have changed over time. Now, let's look at the air again, and let's go to 250 millibar, okay? So that's, um, that's where the jet streams are. This is the pressure. As you go up, up as you go up about, a hun as you drop 150 millibar, that would be up about 1.5 kilometers. 700 the difference is 300 that would be up about three kilometers this is about five actually more like five and a half to six kilometers this is uh closer to 10 11 kilometers okay so this is the wind um this is the jet stream so we click this to show it to slow it down and what you can see let's zoom out first and you can see these jet streams how distorted they are i've given many videos talking about that the loops and whirls and so on but let's see what's going on in terms of, so we've got the jet stream coming down this way here and off, and it's very wide and very powerful, and, and Harvey's uh, interfering with it. So the outflow from Harvey is coming up here, and as I said, um, there's also some of it coming across here, which is feeding storms in Florida, and there's stuff that's coming up which is feeding other storms. Um, you can see that there is remnants here. You know, the, this loop here is also feeding the storm. So the storm here is like a, it's like a gear just bringing humid air from the ocean, dumping it on the land. So as long as it stays stalled there, it's just bringing huge amounts of water onto the land. Okay, so the jet streams are kind of, there's a blocking set up here, so the storm can't move up this way can't move too much that way. That's why it's doing this uh, loop. Normally, these, these things rotate out this way, okay? They always turn to the right normally, but this is turning to the left. Uh, you remember that Sandy did the same thing, okay? So this thing is sitting here just fire-hosing water, 
and as long as it's stationary, it will give huge amounts of rainfall. I mean, we're getting rainfall rates of, of two to four inches per hour. Some, some regions, I've seen five or six even. So I'll continue this video.